to now, the systems considered were tree-like. But in fact, around 90% of daily life mechanical systems have loops of bodies denoted kinematic loops in our domain. Examples of kinematic loops can be found in slide cranks, vehicle suspensions, parallel manipulators, the musculoskeletal system, plus any robotic device interacting with the human body, such as an exoskeleton. In the equations of motion, these kinematic loops will create loop constraints, H, L, that will be added to the algebraic constraint, forming the total set of constraints. How to formulate this constraint HL? The way to do this is to cut every loop of the system, especially in order to formulate the constraints HL. For each loop, where to cut exactly? One can cut either at the level of a body or at the level of a joint. How many cuts do we do? The formula is simple. The number of cuts is equal to the number of physical joints minus the number of moving physical bodies. This number corresponds to the minimal number of cuts to restore a tree-like system. Let's take, for example, the double parallelogram, on which one can observe three kinematic loops. One, two, and three. The number of cuts will be, following the equation, one, two, three, four, five, six joints, minus one, two, three, four bodies. So, two cuts. These cuts could be, for example, here and here. Thus, we clearly see that a tree-like system is restored. And the third loop is automatically opened. Let's now present the three kinds of cuts that can be made. Body cuts, ball cuts, and rod cuts. The body cut is the most general one, as there are always bodies in a loop. The ball cut consists in cutting a ball joint that must be present in the system, such as in a vehicle suspension or a parallel robot and the rod cut is suitable for loops containing a connecting rod, like one can find in a steering mechanism of vehicles. Now let's detail the loop procedures for each of, the, of these three cuts. Let's explain the body cut. Considering this kinematic loop, let's decide to cut, for example, this body which will be denoted as the original body O. The trick to cut this loop in order to express the constraints is to duplicate the original body with a second body having no mass and no inertia, being therefore usually called the shadow body, here in red. This will enable to write the six closing constraints, that is to say, the three constraints in translation that will express that the two points O and O shadow will coincide, and the three constraints in orientation that will impose that the frames XO and X shadow will coincide too. These orientation constraints amount to impose that the rotation matrix between 
these two frames is equal to the unit matrix. Let's consider this multibody loop to explain the ball cut. A ball cut can solely be considered if there is a real ball joint in the loop that can be considered as perfect. This means from a geometrical point of view, no backlash in the joint. From a dynamic point of view, no friction torque in the joint. In this case, this cut will be preferred to the body cut because only three constraints in translation, one, two, and three, will be necessary and sufficient to satisfy the ball functionality. These constraints will express that points O and O prime will always coincide. In other words, from a multibody point of view, this amounts to force vectors P and P prime to be the same. If a loop contains a connecting rod, one can use the rod cut procedure. The two underlying hypotheses are as follows. First, the two spherical rod and joints here are perfect. This means no backlash and no friction. Secondly, the connecting rod here is supposed to have a negligible mass. In this case, the rod can be outright removed from the system. Therefore, a unique constraint is sufficient and expresses that the distance between the two points O and O prime is a constant L. From a multibody point of view, this amounts to impose this distance L between the two extremities of the vectors P and P prime. If the rod cut is applicable, it is far more efficient than the body cut. Let's take, for example, a car with four multi-link suspensions, each of which containing four 3D kinematic loops. On the one hand, with the body cut procedure, it would require, in 3D, six constraints times four loops times four suspensions equal to 96 constraints. And on the other hand, with the rod cut procedure, if applicable, we will have only one constraint instead of six times four loops times four suspensions equal to 16 constraints instead of 96. This considerably alleviates the model and its computation time. All the more the complexity of the constraints resolution is of an order n cube, n be equal to the number of constraints, in this case 16 instead of 96.